So many people are making this mistake, and in this video, I'm going to make it stop! This is ground affected. This is gonna be highly dangerous. My name is your dad, and welcome to leaving your support marks on your 3D models like it's some kind of fashion statement. Now I've noticed in a couple of people's models on Instagram and in across the posts and places where people share models that a lot of people have been leaving support marks and just not really preparing their models correctly and I'm here to show you how to do this. There is a lot of things that go into being a professional model painter but there is something that's probably the most important thing that most people are skipping for some reason and I'm really not sure why. Now this video is not going to be super long I just want to show you roughly how to get rid of those marks and where you should be looking for them and what to do to get rid of them and just to prepare your model so that you can have the silkiest, smoothest, sexiest looking models that ever could be made. Now don't get me wrong, you can do what you want with your models, but if you want them to look a whole lot better, then maybe you want to follow the tips in this video. And before your attention span disappears like that of a goldfish, I would like you to go into the little bottom of the video, click the like button, write some words in the little square box that uh, YouTube gives you to write some words in, and let's crack on with the video. Now of course the first thing you're going to want to do is put your model together so that you can make sure that everything is fitting. If things aren't fitting, the first thing you want to do in preparation for your model painting is actually to make these parts fit. One of the best things or tools you could use is going to be a hobby knife. And I will use that to shave off sections of the model that need to fit a little bit better. I'll also use sandpaper to help aid me in this. Once I've got these parts fitting together, I need to now glue them. And the only reason I'm gluing this one is because it's a personal project. And in order to glue this model together, what I'm going to use is super glue. Cyanoacrylate is its fancy name, and I'm going to use Cyano Activator to activate the glue. What I'll do is put glue on one side of the model and activate on the other and put the two parts together. I use a thick glue at first, and then to fill in some of the gaps, I will use a thinner or a medium glue so that I can then push that into place with anything small enough to push it into place with and I'll use the activator to make it go solid. Look at this awesome sandpaper, it even tells you you are preparing things when you get the sandpaper. I use a really really rough grit to start off with. Yes this is going to leave marks on your model but we will sort that out later. The main focus is to get rid of all those marks. The support marks will be there, you need to get rid of them and now is the time to do that. I try not to make too deep of a mark when I'm sanding like this. Of course you can overdo this, you can always overdo anything. Don't overdo this, you will have a bad time. I then glued on his head and the reason I glued on his head, again, is going to make painting this guy specifically a whole lot easier. Whilst that glue was drying and I'm making sure it has got a solid connection, I'm going to sand off a couple of the other parts. After I'm done with the rougher sandpaper, this will leave a load of marks on the model. And what I'm going to do is come back and fix that up with a very, very high grit sandpaper, which is the biggest jump you could ever do. But I do this and it works and you can do 4 million steps in between if you want, but I'm not trying to sand a piece of glass or marble. And so this works well for me. All I need to do is just kind of cut out some of those rougher textures that the rough sandpaper will leave in the model. I go over all the spots where I can see any support marks. Anywhere where you place the support is going to have a support mark in most cases. So you want to go through, make sure you've cleaned them all off, and then you'll get to a point where you need to fill gaps. As you can see, I have a couple gaps on my model, and the way I'm going to fill these is by using the resin out of my 3D printer. I use a small little UV light to cure this resin. Bear in mind, be careful not to let that light touch your vat because it will definitely cure the resin in your vat, making you a very sad person. As for time when you're doing this, around 5 to 10 seconds will give it a decent little cure. I then stick it into the curer afterwards and I let it cure properly for around probably 5 to 10 minutes. I go back into the other parts that I had needed to clean up and that would be the arms of the model. And also his headphones. 
I'm now going to use one of my wife's makeup brushes. These are very soft, they are amazing for dry brushing, but they are even more amazing for cleaning your models up. If you do this first, you are setting yourself up for success. I've made a video, it was one of my first videos that I ever made, and basically I said you need to dust your models, and a lot of people still don't dust their models. I don't know why you don't dust your model. This part saves you a lot of headaches in the end. Then to hold these parts, I'm gonna use a multitude of things, and this is to show you what you can use, because people often ask me. I use these crocodile clamp things, which I got from a painting set. I use broken paint brushes, which are probably dead and I've just broken the top off of them. Those are really great handles. And the other way you can do it is by using a carbon fiber rod or a steel or a metal rod and drilling a small little hole into the model and you'll place that rod into there, giving you something to hold on to while you paint the model. After the model had cured completely, I went back and just done a tiny touch up of some of the sanding around the parts that I had cured on top. What happens when you put resin on top, it tends to bubble up a little bit and it's never perfectly straight or smooth, so you need to come back and tidy that up. The next step is to put a base or a prime layer down. Basically, in this case, I'm going to use this one from Citadel. It is very expensive, I know, but it really sticks very well to objects that I've noticed. And also it flattens very, very nicely, which is a good uh, thing to have for a paint. Once I've painted the primer layers onto the model, you can now see the model is looking a lot crisper and cleaner, and it almost looks seamless where I'd molded those parts together. And this is exactly what you want for a good start to start painting your model and have a great success. Now I can understand that not everybody is going to have the patience it takes to get a model looking a lot crisper just before you even start painting. And of course you don't have to do what you don't want to do. But if you would like your models to look just that little bit better, then you might want to take those extra half an hour, maybe an hour to prepare your model before you start painting. Also you may have noticed in a lot of my videos recently, I haven't been wearing anything other than a hoodie, that's because it's been very cold. But I decided in this video, I turned the heaters on so that I could wear my shirt and show you my wonderful glorious t-shirt that I got from Slow Down Clothing. I'm going to leave a link for this brand in the description below. Please go check them out. They are an American based company. It's actually one of my favorite tattoo artists who created this company. Please go check their work out and if you want to get anything, go and grab yourself a t-shirt or a hat. The dudes do some amazing stuff. I wear it always in my videos and uh, it's kind of my uniform now. Of course, we are at the part of the video where I would like to say a super special thank you. Unfortunately, every time I do a video, it feels like I kind of just go through the motions and the thank yous don't feel heartfelt enough. And I don't really know how else to present this to you guys other than to just keep saying thank you so much for your support and it's because of you guys that I'm able to blind marbles with this light bulb. And if I'm being honest, I can handle a little bit of blind eyeball. If it means that everybody gets just that little bit better at their next 3D print and model painting. And I can't forget to thank the Patreons because of course the Patreons are the ones who pay for the lights to blind my eyeballs. And without blind eyeballs, I can't make the videos. Just in case you didn't know, my Patreon gives you access to our private Discord. On that Discord, we discuss 3D printing and painting constantly. There is a couple of model painters, there's a couple of miniature painters, there's a couple of everybody. And basically, if you are tired of Facebook and how stupid the answers can be, and how stupid people can treat you in social media in general, then maybe you want to consider the Patreon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, because if you didn't enjoy it, not really much I can do for you, but you can see the smile on my face because that means it's time to f*** off! <laughs> oh dear, I forgot to record something for the end. Usually there's a thing at the end. This can be the thing at the end. <laughs>